What's up everyone? All right, well, here we are Friday morning and I just finished my sixth consecutive grain day, which is fantastic. I'm really happy about that. I had a little bit of a red streak there, but have now bounced back and I'm on a little bit of a green streak. But you know, I have been really fighting FOMO over the last few days, the last week or so. Um, I'm not even sure how many days uh, in the last week. I think this happened on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, uh, so three, maybe three days in a row that um, I went red, I, I went green, then dropped down, gave back a lot of profit, and either went red or was way down, and then dug myself back out of the hole and overtraded like crazy. The overall market right now being so volatile, you know, I, I keep hearing headlines come out of, you know, this is a coronavirus headline or World Health Organization says pandemic or says this or Trump is going to say this and all of a sudden the market has these knee-jerk reactions and if you it seems like if you jump in in that knee-jerk reaction then you get the whipsaw back the other way and it's like false breakouts left and right and I have burned a lot of commissions and just kind of spun my wheels trying to trade that stuff and I, I think what has been going on is I've been trying as hard as I can to make back the losses from the red streak. I've been impatient and wanting to make it back as quickly as I can. And of course, because the markets have been volatile, I've felt like there have been opportunities had I only been willing to be a lot more aggressive than I should be. And that's that you know side that of, of myself that will coax me into taking really high risk trades. So, you know, how much you, you could have made if you, you know, did a swing trade on TVIX. It went from $88 last week to over $450 this week. You know, why didn't you just hold it overnight? And why didn't you just buy 3,000 shares? And then, you know, that part of you that's like, well, listen, you literally can't afford the risk. You know, the worst thing you can do is have a few red days in a row, start to bounce back, and then go even further in the red because you're trying to swing for home runs. The only way to dig out of a hole is to just step by step, small green day, small green day, and you have to be patient, but it's not easy. So I've been struggling with that a little bit, and the way I'm trying to deal with that is just to totally stop looking at the market. Uh, so that's what I'm doing today. I'm not gonna look at it for the rest of the day. And you know, will I miss opportunities? Sure, but I'm also preventing myself from giving back my gains. I'm walking away with over $2,000 of profit, it's a great way to finish the week. It's great to have six consecutive red days despite the volatility in the market. It's when I get sucked back in that I risk giving back those gains. So really have to be grateful for those gains because 2,000 a day is, um, I mean, that's good money. So that's where I'm kind of at right now. I hope you guys enjoy the recap. I have some videos I'll be uploading over the weekend. So stay tuned for those and I'll see you guys first thing on Monday morning. All right, see you guys soon. everyone so uh, we're gonna do a quick midday market recap go over the trades from this morning I'm gonna finish the day up two thousand two hundred forty one dollars I traded three stocks I'm green on only one out of the three but I'm gonna walk away green which is great uh, NCLH was the biggest winner and uh, all three trades were to the long side I'm trading in a retirement account so I can't short um, but NCLH was a bottom bounce, buying a really weak stock as it bounced back up, whereas OCUL and BXC were both trading um, momentum stocks. On BXC, my last trade was right here for the break over uh, four, six, uh, 50, hit a high of 676, and then came right back down. My first trade on it was uh, right here for the break over six, and it popped up to 620, and then dropped all the way back down on that one as well. So on the first one, I lost about $30, or no, sorry, I lost $200 on my first trade, and then I lost about 400 or whatever on my second trade. So two trades on that one, no follow through, I'm leaving it alone for the rest of the day. OCUL, my one trade on this um, was right here for a break over 520, uh, and that failed uh, down $238. NCLH was the best trade of the day. And this one, um, I can show you 
the recording of. So let's pull that up. All right, where is this? All right, so um, NCLH was halted going down, and what you can see is that it was halted once, twice, three times, four times, five times in a row. Halted five times going down. After the fifth halt going down, I was like, this to me looks like it's time to bounce. Now, it was halted at uh, about 10.30, and on the previous resumptions from halts, it, in it in immediately was uh, dropping hard. Now, someone asked uh, how I know when stocks will resume. This was halted at 9.57 and 34 seconds. That was the last print. So I know it'll resume exactly five minutes later, which is not, which is 10.02 and 34 seconds. So let's go forward to 10.02 and 34 seconds. That was my first trade on BXC. So here we're gonna look for resumption. So I put my order at 10.50 and I put my hand on the buy button. This is a limit order, it's not a market order. It opens and the first thing I'm seeing are green prints. So the fact that it opened and I'm seeing green prints, this is the first time I've seen that in five halts going down. So that is what said, you know what? That's what told me, you know what, take, take the stab. So I start punching it here as I'm seeing green. One, two, three, and look at that. I'm in 6,000 shares at 31. And I am now gonna be holding during a halt going up. That is a near picture perfect reversal. It really doesn't get a lot better than that. Um, the only thing that would have been a little bit better is if it had uh, resumed and uh, squeezed up to 1150. Unfortunately, on resumption from this halt, um, I, I felt like, I was like, listen, man, you're in the driver's seat. Just hold it and let's see if this squeezes up to 1150. But at the same time, I can't let it go back to break even. So I sort of told myself if it goes back down to 11 to 10, if it breaks back below 11, that's a sign to be really cautious. And if it drops um, down to, you know, 1075, then I'll, I'll ease off my position. So right now I'm like, okay, this looks good. I'm up 4,600. I'm thinking I'm up, but I'm gonna let it ride. I wanna see it move higher. And then all of a sudden right there, I was like, uh-oh, that's not good. So I start selling right here and I'm all out except for 1,500 shares. It bounces back up, but this isn't what I wanted to see. It's kind of struggling. And then right there I said, nope, I gotta get out. So I made 3,200 on it. Not the best trade I've ever had, um, but it, as far as reversals go, it was a very clean um, reversal. So I am happy with that at the very least. Unfortunately, the trades on OCUL and BXC, you know, kicked me back a little bit. So instead of being up, uh, well, three grand, I'm up only 2,200. CCL, um, we had a really nice uh, bottom bounce on this one as well, cruise line right here. And I tried to take that trade and I didn't get filled. So that was unfortunate. That was at 1550 uh, or at 1560, whatever it was. Nice bounce, full dollar per share all the way up to 1660. But then it came back down. I've been feeling, uh, I've definitely been fighting FOMO. Uh, actually, I wouldn't say I've been fighting it. I've been just giving into FOMO uh, the last few uh, weeks of trading. Yesterday in the afternoon, I had a trade on TBIX. Um, so what was going on in the S&P 500 yesterday afternoon? This was right, where was it? Um, it was right about, let me actually switch charts. Um, SPY, TBIX. I'm just gonna put this chart up here because this is all the way I had it yesterday. All right, so yesterday I had this chart here and I was watching the five minute chart on the S&P. And of course we had uh, dropped down. This chart looks kind of crazy. So let me just clean it up for a second. Um, I'll turn that off. 
So the, we had the halt down, popped back up, came back down, and we had support at this trend line here. And then when we came back down right here, I thought right here that the market was going to break below this 251 level and flush back down to the lows. So when it dropped right here, I went long TVIX right here. And then TVIX proceeds to, obviously, the market false breakout bounces all the way back up to the VWAP. And in this trade right here, let's look at TVIX. So that was yesterday. What time was that? Um, 13, 15.05. Oh, all right. So let's go look at that. So that was, <laughs> so that was right, right here. This was crazy. So it, um, am I looking at the right spot? No, I'm not. Um, sorry, it was right, it was right here. Okay, it was right here when we got this breakout. And you can see how TVIX had a nice break here over 386. It popped up to a high of 392. And then in this candle, and I didn't take any profit because I was looking for it to break over 400. And then on this candle, it drops all the way back down to 373. Even though I was only holding 200 shares, I was down over $2,000. So I was down over two grand. It then comes back up and I end up um, getting out of it. And then into the uh, after hour session, it squeezed all the way up to four. 72 which was absolutely insane so all the afternoon trading i did yesterday on tvix and on uh, vix and on svxy i finished the day up about four thousand three hundred dollars but so i made an, an extra thousand versus what i had at 10 30. but i was trading all the way to six o'clock my best exit on vix was um at fifty dollars so VIX squeezed up after hours to $50.50, and I was still holding and watching it as the market after hours was tanking. So even though I made an extra $1,000, uh, my commissions just kept going up and up and up and up. And net, I didn't really make any more money. And even worse, for a moment, I was risking giving back my entire day of profit. And I've been really kind of having a hard time with this because on the one hand, I feel that when I stop, like right now I'm stopping and it's 1030 and I feel like I'm going to miss opportunities. I'm going to miss opportunities that might come up. I mean, I had obviously some great opportunity, great trades this morning on NC um, LH and there may be other trades just like that later today that could give me great wins. And so it feels very difficult to walk away knowing that I'm, I'm going to be missing out. On the other hand, what is easy to forget is the fact that every trade you take, of course, carries risk. And sometimes, like something like TVIX can just rip against you so fast that all of a sudden, um, you know, you're, you're a deer in the headlights. I mean, literally, you're just staring, you're just like, you're frozen. Um, so, and I can pull up my trades yesterday. Um, so yesterday was the 12th, 3, 12, 2020. So this was my, um, this is my gross profit yesterday, $4,387. Net profit after commissions, 3,169. I spent $833 on ECN fees and $384 on commissions at the rate of $2 a trade. So $2 a trade, that's almost 200 trades. 200 individual executions where I press buy, press sell, press buy, press sell. You know, so I was, um, I was just churning, just churning. My win to loss ratio was one to one. My accuracy was 57%. You know, it just wasn't a great day. And of course, uh, on Wednesday, I had that really nice trade on, what was it, BKYI, that gave me an extra $4,000. And it was thanks to, you know, stepping up and taking this trade right here at um, 1130. 
so you know I there's that part of me that feels like man you know if I trade past you know if I if I do trade in the afternoon I, I could make some extra money however let me just show you um, my PL. This is uh, year to date by time of day. This is my PL by time of day. So you can see that um, the bulk of my profit is between 9 30 and 10 a.m. 30 minutes. Yeah. You could even break it down more, but just show it like this. It's easier. So between 9.30 and 10, and then trades between 11 and 12, no, between 12 and 1. And in fact, anything after uh, 12, 12 noon, net this year so far has been a loss. Now I did get that $4,000 after hour trade um, yesterday, which was nice, and in net profit, because uh, that's when I finally locked it up, I guess, but on VIX, but generally speaking, the afternoon trading has just been um, burning commissions and spinning my wheels. And even despite that, it still feels hard to walk away because you never know when you might have a day that uh, you do get that winner. So it's something that I'm trying to get a little bit better about. And it, it's so easy to get sucked back into the market and all of a sudden sit down and hear the scanner or see something and think, OK, this is it. And the feeling of being a little behind the ball um, not having made as much as I was hoping I would make in January and then trying to play catch up in February then getting really aggressive in the last two days of the month when I was up 85,000 and thinking I'm going to go for a hundred thousand dollars on the month and then losing 15 grand in the last two days so um, that was disappointing I'm, I'm in good shape on the year I'm green on the year but I'm not uh, up as much as I would have liked to have been so um, Dave, my fees yesterday were $800 and those were ECN fees and my commissions were about three, uh, 400. So almost 12, $1,300 in fees and commissions yesterday, which is crazy. That's way, way too much C considering how much I made. It would be okay if I had made $20,000, you know, I'm usually okay with commissions being about 10% of my profit. Uh, that's typically been the case. And that's the, the price of having really good executions and using the software that is used by institutional traders. If I wanted to use software like TD Ameritrade, let's just say for every 10,000 shares I traded, I got one cent less in good execution. That'd be $100 loss for every, every 10,000 shares. So then you're talking about 100,000 shares that's $1,000. You talk about 300,000 shares, that's $3,000. You know, you start talking about millions of shares over the course of months and years, and you're talking about a lot of money lost because your executions are really not very good. ECN fees are the fee to uh, direct route your order. Uh, so I can direct route my order to, um, you know, any of these market makers here, but I have to pay for that. You can't do that with um, most retail um, trading platforms but retail traders generally are not trading as aggressively actively uh, as I am so they don't need to they don't need it but but I do so anyways um, today here at 1038 I'm gonna walk away um, it is let's see my sixth consecutive green day so six green days in a row I've left some money on the table some days. I've given back profit on several of the days, trying to just overtrade and giving into FOMO. And today I just want to walk away green. I would have been better off having just one trade on NCLH, but um, took stabs at a couple other things, gave back a little profit. I'm not going to try to get back what I lost. It doesn't really matter. I'll be back at it tomorrow. Uh, or on Monday and try to make it, you know, a seventh consecutive green day. So it's nice to be on a little bit of a, a, a hot streak here, maybe a warm streak. And it is nice that while the market is red, I am green. Uh, it's a good feeling, you know, it's not nice to see the market red, but just to feel like, you know, 
it really doesn't matter. The market could be down 11%, 12% like it was at last night, and I'm still making money. In fact, today when the market was up, it was a little harder to find good trades. So I, I probably even typically do better when the market is red. But anyways, that's it for me. I hope you guys have a great rest of the day, and I will see you all uh, first thing tomorrow morning. All right, bye everyone. Hey. Did you know that I go live every single morning between 9 and 9.15 to stream my pre-market watch list? Subscribe to the channel, press the bell for the alert, and you'll get the notification.